to be like Jay Leno. <laughs> thanks to Anand and Juan for their remarks and their participation today, and a special thank you to Susan for that kind and thorough introduction. But as thorough as the introduction was, it did have one important gap. And Susan failed to mention that I am actually a, a two peas in the pod with an icon of American pop culture. And let me just <laughs> illustrate here. <laughs> now, let's, let's have a little better look at this here. Okay. Now, of course, many of the similarities are obvious. So if you talk about looks, talent, charisma, th you know, those are obvious. But Elvis and I are alike in more subtle ways. Both Elvis and I went abroad as young men, both at the age of 23, both to Germany. And moreover, both of us met in Germany a younger woman who we successfully wooed and ultimately <laughs> married. It's true, it's true. And I'm pleased to report my wife, Sandy, is here with us today. <laughs> now, though she may be having second thoughts at, at the moment. Uh, now, the topic today is competition, good, bad, and ugly. And our theme is that competition can be all three, and oftentimes a particular bit of competitive behavior will spark disagreement as to which one it is. So let's start right out with an example from my own experience. Coaching youth softball, these were seven and eight year olds, my son and his comrades. And as coach, I had a rule because I had two kids, and only two kids on the team who could catch the ball reliably. I put one at first base, and I put another at second base, and then I had a rule. You could only throw to first or second base. <laughs> you were not allowed to throw to third or to home. Right? Now, let me get your reactions. Is that good, bad, ugly, competitive behavior? How many think that was appropriate? <laughs> okay, we got a few. Anyone disagree? Anyone think this was maybe a little out of line? My own wife is against me. All right. That's, uh, that's, uh, now I, <laughs> and my department chair. Uh, now, I, I will note that we did win the championship, if it uh, changes anybody's view. And one thing that was interesting about this is about halfway through the season, one of the other coaches adopted the, a similar technique. <laughs> now that's an interesting thing about competition in a, in a fiercely competitive environment. Whatever one manager or firm does, uh, whether it's uh, to, to cut costs, to maximize efficiency or revenues, uh, others will have strong pressures to copy. And that can be even if cutting costs uh, go, goes along with pollution or loss of jobs uh, domestically, or perhaps it goes along uh, with uh, behavior like our Wall Street firms uh, in terms of getting into securities based on subprime mortgage crisis uh, that, and, and very risky activity. There are strong pressures for others to follow, and oftentimes competition then can be a race to the bottom, and that, that is a, an element of competition that, that's important to recognize. Now, I've always enjoyed competition, uh, even as a youth. Uh, I, I enjoyed competing in uh, baseball and other pursuits. When I was not able to make it to the major leagues, I, I had to pursue other lines of, of work. Uh, in between high school and college, I worked for a janitorial firm called American Maintenance. American Maintenance uh, was uh, founded right at that time by a friend of mine from high school, a fellow by the name of Warren Davis. He founded the company uh, in, in this manner. He had previously worked for another janitorial company in the area. In fact, he was the, the manager of that company. He decided to found his own firm, and he went back to all of the clients from the previous firm. Uh, and was successful in pulling them over, stealing them over to his new business. 
Now again, I ask you, is that good, bad, or ugly? Is that, is that appropriate, inappropriate? How many people think it's okay to do that? Okay, okay. all right. Now, now what if I tell you the owner of the previous firm was a good friend of his who had really helped, <laughs> who had really helped Warren out when times were tough by giving him a job? Is it still okay? How many? Okay, okay a few of you. Now, what if I tell you uh, that there may have been some strategic incompetence in terms of the quality of the cleaning with the previous firm that aided Warren in stealing these clients over to his company. Now, still okay? We're still okay? Okay, well, maybe we're, we're getting, getting, getting at the edge here. And again, it illustrates that competitive behavior often can run the gamut of unpleasant, unseemly, unethical, illegal at some times, uh, and uh, one of the things that I've, I've been very supportive of with uh, Dean Anan since he's been our dean now for going on three years is a strong emphasis on ethics and corporate social responsibility in our curriculum, in our research, in our outreach, uh, because I think that's very important because competitive behavior often is, is at the edge uh, in a very competitive global economy. Now, I did my undergraduate work at the University of Wisconsin at Madison <laughs> in the late 60s, early 70s. This was a time when a lot of old established societal norms and values were being challenged. And an exercise uh, we go through with, with, our, uh, with our MBA students uh, is to uh, uh, ask, what were some of those norms and values? Anyone remember anything that was challenged? Unlike our students, who, for whom this is ancient history, some, many of you live through this. Yes? I'm a human. Do not fold, spindle, or staple. Okay, okay. So individualism uh, was, was important. Uh, any others uh, we might remember that were challenged at this time? Anyone uh, want to uh, offer anything else? Okay, so it was a time of, that, of, of pushing for, for, gender, for gender equality was a very important uh, one at the time. Uh, yes? Okay, okay, so it was anti-establishment in, in a lot of different respects. And one of the, one of the areas and our, uh, uh, that where there was a challenge, this was a time of challenging the uh, free market system. And uh, there was a time of anti-business and anti-materialism on the, on the college campuses. And so this particular demonstration took place right outside the business school building, the Commerce Building at the University of Wisconsin. And it was on the occasion of Dow Chemical coming to interview at the University of Wisconsin. Being a business major at that time was very unpopular. There weren't, weren't many business majors. Now, I note that in a courageous act, my older brother, Bruce, was a business major at the University of Wisconsin. And I'm, I'm pleased to say that not only did he survive, but he's here visiting with us today from, from Minneapolis. Now, I was not as courageous, and I was uh, not a business major myself, uh, as uh, I was kind of one of those anti-establishment uh, people that, at, at, at the time. Uh, I studied economics. I uh, worked uh, a senior honors thesis on worker alienation and other, uh, other problems of, of, of that sort uh, at, the, uh, at the university. Now, another uh, area of discussion that uh, always prompts an interesting discussion with our students is to what extent did these changes, or to what extent did these challenges to the existing norms at that time result in permanent changes? And to what extent uh, did we sort of go back to how we were before? Well, it, it's always an interesting discussion. And I think most of the areas that were challenged, like the area of of, of gender equality and so on did, did result in permanent changes. However, the anti-business, anti-materialism uh, sentiment of the time faded away pretty quickly. And so by the mid to late 70s, uh, the business major, for example, became very popular and it's been popular ever since. We seem to, 
uh, again, uh, kind of went away from and went back to the, the, the earlier norm. Uh, 